How can you replace blank values with something more meaningful? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of IDoData.com. So here we have an example of a table, and we're just going to just look at all of the code. First of all, we've got drop table if exists, because I don't want to have to run this code lots of times and then find it fails because the table already exists. This drop table if exists only works with SQL Server 2016 Service Pack 1 or later. So if you've got a more recent version, this will work. If not, I suggest you just don't include this line. Then I create a table with a single column, and that column is called text field. It's a varchar 20 and it allows null values. Then we're inserting into this table the words first value, second value, a blank, which is not the same as a null. So a null is the absence of data. A blank is data. It just so happens that it's zero characters long. So if you take, for instance, the words I do data, what's the fourth word from it? Well, if you want to say that it is empty, there is no fourth word, then you would say null. If, however, you want to say that there is a word but zero characters, and then you would use two single apostrophes. Now, do be careful. That with two single apostrophes is not the same as that, which is a speech mark. So here we have got our table, but it's not very user friendly. If there was nothing here, then could it say nothing or empty or blank or something like that? So that's the subject of this video. So there are lots of ways to do this, depending partly on whether you want nulls as well as blank strings or empty strings. So let's have a look at a few ways. First of all, you've got the one word is null. Now you might be used to using is null when it's not one word. For example, where this text field is null. So if I were to run that, then that will just return one row, which is the null row. Alternatively, you could say is not null which would return the other three rows, including the row which happens to have zero characters. So that is is null, which is two words. It is used in the where clause. However, the one word is null is a function. And what it says is if what I'm about to give you, which is the field, happens to be null, then output something different. So I'm going to output blank in brackets. So this is my second field. So this would be a second column over here. So let's see what the answer is. And you can see that it has replaced null with blank. Now another way of doing this is through the word coalesce. And it has exactly the same sort of syntax. So here we have my third field and exactly the same result. The difference between the two, well, coalesce, I could put in additional fields. So if I had another field called null, for instance, which happens to contain null, then it would go to my third field. It would give me the first non-blank answer. I can't do that with is null. It only allows me to put in two arguments, no more. Another difference is that coalesce can be used in more than just the TSQL language. Is null is the one which I frequently use. It's just for TSQL purposes. But it's much easier for me to write is null as one word than to try and remember how to spell coalesce. So this is fine, apart from the fact that if the string is empty, in other words, it's not null, it just happens to have zero characters, it will not be changed. And the reason for that is because, well, it's not null. So for this, we need to use a different approach. We can use case. So case is like an if function in other languages. So I say, if something happens to be true, then give me this output. If something else happens to be true, then give me this output and so on. So I can say, have a look at text field. When it happens to be zero characters, then give me the output of blank. Else, so in all other situations, give me my text field. 
So you can see there's a lot more words here, but I've got a lot more control over what I'm having as the output. So you can see now we have our empty string as being the string blank in the output. Our null goes back to null because it is not an empty string. Hmm. Okay, let's expand this. Let's put in when null, then blank. And this will be our if field. So when I use case like this, case and then I have a central thing that I'm testing multiple times, then while you could call it an if statement, you might also want to call it a switch or a choose in other languages. So let's see if this works. And you can see, no, it doesn't. So I can't say in a case, case this when null. It's just like if I was to have my select statement and then have a where clause and say where this equals null. I can't do this with null. This will never be true because null does not equal null. Imagine null being the absence of data, data you don't know. Is data that you don't know equal to some other data that you don't know? And the answer is you don't know. So it's never true, it's never false, it's I don't know, it's always null as the answer. So this doesn't work. So if this doesn't work, how can we capture both? And the answer is to move this text field. So I move it the other side of the when. So when this text field is equal to an empty string, then give me this text. When this text field is null as opposed to equals null, then give me this field. Otherwise, give me the field itself. So now let's have a look at it. And now you can see that it does work. Where it is a zero character empty string, then it's caught by this condition and so it gives me blank. Where it is null, it's caught by this one. So I can just clarify this in the output by adding the words empty and null. So they're not being caught by the same condition, they are being caught by different conditions. And if neither of these two conditions happen to be true, then it just goes through to what I put after the else. If you don't put anything in the else, well, it's like if I said else null. So generally you do want to use the else in a case and then end ends this case. You do need it with a case. If you don't, then you're going to get a syntax error. And as always with formulas, I would strongly suggest that you give the column an alias, a name. So in this video, we have gone through a table and we have replaced an empty string and a null with blank. If you like this video and want more from me, then why not have a look through the rest of this YouTube channel? Or have a look at my Udemy courses if you like something more comprehensive and in an order. So it depends how much time you've got. If you've got an hour, then join me for my SQL Server Essentials in an hour, where I go through this select statement. If you've got a bit more time, then have a look at my database fundamentals, where I go through additional things such as backups, restore, security, insert, update, delete, and joining tables together. And if you've got a lot more time and you want to go really in depth, then please join me for my Microsoft SQL Server with TSQL course. It's 29 hours long, but the good news is that you can start at any particular session and find something that would be of interest for you. If you like this video, then please click the like button and please press that subscribe button and click that bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.